Stewardship Committee. So I wanted to say thank you to all of you for joining us tonight for this evening's Advanced Gift Giving Comprehensive Fund Appeal event. Uh, we appreciate you taking the time to learn a little bit more about the plans for the appeal and giving careful consideration to making the gift early. Um, this will help us jumpstart our appeal campaign. So for this evening, we've got a brief presentation planned um, followed by a period of time where we can ask questions about anything relating to the building projects or the appeal campaign, how the appeal's going to work, timing. Uh, you'll also um, have a chance to ask us questions on a one-on-one -on -one basis. So if you see anyone wearing a brown t-shirt, um, you can reach out to them and ask them questions. And if they don't know the answer to your questions, they will refer you to somebody who, who does. Um, in addition, anyone who would like to take a tour of any parts of the church where we have decided it needs a little bit of attention and is involved in the renovation, um, Jerry Wunderlich's committee, the uh, building renovation committee members, uh, should be available. And Jerry will be standing, I believe, by by the easels. And so uh, if you want to touch base with Jerry, <laughs> you will uh, be group around church. Um, So this evening, the, this is going to be a very brief program, but I'm starting out with the welcoming and Pastor Chris is going to provide an opening statement and then Frank Simmer Mansick will give us um, his expression of support for the, the building plan and the, the fund appeal. Um, Jerry is going to give us an overview of the, the building plan itself and the renovation and then we're going to see a, a brief video on um, on St. Matthew's that John Karadowski put together, and I'm, I'm anxious to see it myself. It sounds wonderful. Uh, Pastor Chris will then take it, or I, I will then give us a period of time for you guys to ask questions. I'll do my best to answer them, and if not, there's a number of people here who've got a lot more detail than I do on uh, the, the building renovation. Um, and then Pastor Chris will talk about next steps in the appeal. Before you leave tonight, if anyone has to, um, you know, step out early before the program is over, um, please be sure to see uh, Frank uh, or a member of the committee to get your fund appeal packet. Uh, they'll be outside on the way out before you leave this evening. And then uh, the end of the program will be turned over to Pastor Margaret who will close with a prayer. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Pastor Chris. You don't have to applaud. But it's okay if you want to. <laughs> but uh, just uh, a big thank you for coming out tonight. Um, sometimes they call these events pace setter events. Um, it's a chance for an, an early group to come out, um, hear about the materials before the larger group, which will happen on the 28th. Um, that's when we'll present um, a very similar presentation, a shortened presentation, at, uh, at, uh, on Sunday morning on the 28th. But um, so you're kind of our pace setters, so you're the ones that get to come out early, um, make an early pledge, um, chance for you to prayerfully consider uh, the materials and, and how you're able to support this uh, campaign that we're doing. And then by doing so, when we get together on the 28th, that's really the chance then to say our pace setters have set the pace and, and this is where we're going. So, um, so just a big thank you for coming out tonight. I know it's giving up a Sunday night. Hopefully you really enjoyed uh, the time, wonderful music, and uh, I think we should give a uh, bigger round of applause to you.
sitting in similar seats, thinking about the future, thinking about where they were going to go with ministry, how God was leading them forward. Um, and to be sitting here tonight thinking about how we are participating in that, in that same uh, vision, that same dream moving forward, and how we can serve uh, the greater area of Waltosa and Milwaukee um, to really bring about God's love and that expression through all that we do. Grounded in faith and then growing to serve. Uh, because service is, I think everyone would agree, uh, a huge part of what we are about. We're not a church that always thinks about ourselves. We often are much more focused on that outward expression of who we are. Um, but every once in a while you need to stop and say, our boilers aren't working. <laughs> and the, the state is requiring us to improve our safety codes with sprinklers. And um, we have a meal ministry that's going crazy and we need to support it with a better kitchen. And our staff is um, so uh, good, but they need a better space. So the, those are the kind of things that we're really looking forward to. Um, so we'll be hearing a little bit more about that tonight. I don't want to steal other people's thunder. Um, but again, thanks for coming out and thanks for your support and your prayerful consideration. So, call upon um, Frank to come forward. Thank you. Frank. <coughs> My wife Patty and I became members here at St. Matthews about three years ago. I have to tell you, it's a little bit intimidating uh, standing before you today. Not so much just from public speaking, but rather from the fact that uh, many of you have been members here for five times longer than I've mean, been members, maybe ten, maybe even fifteen times longer than we've been members. So from where I stand, as a relatively new member, I see an absolutely fantastic worship space, a magnificent organ, a great staff, and probably most of all, a congregation whose commitment to sacrifice and service to our fellow man is really second to none. You've really accomplished a great deal in 93 years of existence. So it's both humbling and gratifying that I've been given this opportunity to speak to you tonight. So, when I was asked to be on the steering committee for this appeal, my first reaction was, why me? Maybe because I've only been here three years, and I'm only here. I am just a short timer here, but I gave it some thought, and I felt I could bring some talents to this effort. Those talents came from the fact that I've been employed at the Harley Davidson Motor Company for 34 years. I work in the product planning area. Now, if you know anything about Harley, you know that we pride ourselves on being good stewards of our resources. Am I right, Sue? Am I right, Dara? <laughs> Having worked through nearly two near-death experiences at Harley, I can testify to the fact that we don't take spending money very late. For us to get approval of a new product or a new project, we have to run through a gauntlet of serious questions. Why do we need to make this investment? Well, it's the incremental value. Can we spend less? Do we have to do this now? Can it wait? What's our return on investment going to be? So when I was asked to be on the committee, I thought that the, the talent I could bring was to become fixated on why this is so important. Why do we need a new boiler? Why do we have to upgrade the kitchen area? Why do we have to put in a security system? Why, why, why? But as I learned more about the appeal and began to view it from the context of this congregation's mission and ministry, my barrage of why questions quickly turn to who and how questions. Who will we serve and how will we minister to them? So in the course of my work on this appeal, I've learned that by making these investments at this time, we will be enabling this wonderful community of faith to continue on its 93-year history of ministry to those in need. 
They will allow us to continue to provide food to the hungry, shelter to the needy, comfort to those who are normally invisible to us, folks in El Salvador and Tanzania. It'll provide a warm and, and welcoming environment of fellowship to ourselves and our neighboring community. Provide a rich and learning environment for all, especially our youth. But maybe most of all, it'll better enable us to find both that challenge in our daily lives and a real sense of satisfaction in our souls. So on behalf of the Appeals Steering Committee, we request that you prayerfully consider your participation in this appeal. And as you do that, let me give you a hint, because I've been through this. My advice is, don't dwell on the why questions. Dwell on the who and the how. Because after all, we are grounded in faith and growing to serve each other. Thank you for your consideration. Good evening. My name is Jerry Waterglitch. I'm a member of the Building Renovation Committee and also the Property Committee. Normally, Ray Eisner would probably be up here as the chairperson of the Renovation Committee to explain you know, what is being done and what the program comprehends, but he was not able to be with us tonight, so I'll try to fill those large shoes. Um, phase one of our interior renovation really focuses on the physical support system. First off, it comprehends the replacing and modernization of our boilers, ventilation, and AC systems, commonly referred to as HVAC. As most of you are aware, our current boilers are over 40 years old and really have exceeded their normal useful life. I don't know if you're aware, but St. Matthews spent $10,500 in boiler maintenance and repairs in 2012. And so far, through the first three months of 2013, we've spent almost $4,000. That's a phenomenal amount of money that could be going toward a meal ministry or a myriad of other charity-based uh, programs. Uh, another part of phase one comprehends modernizing and relocating our kitchen and meal ministry facility. As you are aware, our current kitchen is outdated in both design and functionality. Even during large social events here at the church, sometimes we have a hard time servicing the crowd with equipment that sometimes doesn't work as well as it should or, or isn't working at all. The new kitchen will be located adjacent to the youth room over toward the east corner here, pretty much underneath the bride's chapel. And the beauty of that location allows construction of the new kitchen area to be contemplated and completed prior to having to uh, take the old kitchen out of service so there'll be no disruption in what we're uh, capable of doing. Another part of phase one consists of upgrading and enhancing our security system. Uh, like the boilers, these systems are old and have outlived their uh, normal useful life. Updating and enhancing these systems will ensure the safety of our congregation and our guests. Phase one also will include installing the fire sprinkler system. Uh, as Pastor Chris uh, relayed, when we put on our latest addition that I'm standing under right here, we were grandfathered by the city not to have to comply with those codes. Um, that's not going to be an option going forward. So as we uh, start construction in, in other areas of the building, we will be required to meet uh, city and state ordinances for fire sprinkler systems. So that will be a part of phase one. Phase one also creates new office space in the old kitchen area, as well as some modernization of the current office area. You know, as the church has grown, so has the staff. We're looking at <clears throat> reviewing the functionality and efficiency of the staffs. And 
by improving these important areas, we can increase our staff's contribution to the congregation and community. Finally, phase one comprehends renovating the upstairs bathrooms and uh, some renovations of Friendship Hall. Altogether, we estimate that phase one will cost between two and two and a half million dollars. Due to the size and scope of phase one, it will be broken down into sub-phases or stages. Stage one, as we've already talked about, will really consist of replacing and modernizing our HVAC systems. So where do we currently stand? Currently our HVAC systems design is being finalized with the architects and Harlem Associates. We're probably 30 days or less away from having those finalized designs. At that time, we can work our own internal cost estimates and we will send those uh, designs out for request for quote. Um, after we obtain our cost estimates and quotes, and as is, is anticipated, um, the HVAC system design and funding plan will be submitted to the congregation for approval in June. During the summer, the balance of phase one, the design will be finalized with affordability in mind. Again, um, I think as Frank insinuated, the why questions are being asked and analyzed by every different committee and every group within the congregation, from the funding committee, the building design committee, our finance committee, everyone is looking at how do we do it, how do we do it in the most affordable way, what can we reuse, what needs to be new, how do we minimize changes that just spend money for spending money? Every committee is looking at that and evaluating all the possible alternatives so that the best decision in the congregation in the congregation's interest can be made. HVAC work after approval would be anticipated to start after uh, vacation Bible school, which would be somewhere in the mid-August time frame. It's currently estimated that that changeover six to eight weeks. So the idea is to, to get vacation by the school in and then change over the boiler systems and be ready and up and going for the next heating system season. By the fall of 2013, the congregation would be asked to review and approve the final phase one project and funding plans. The remaining stages of phase one will begin in fall of 2013. Again, with a keen focus on minimizing the disruption of church functions. Last thing we're going to do is tear up every corner of the church and, and disrupt all the different functions that are going on. There's careful planning going into staging the sequence of events and construction to keep as many other functions operating while this goes on and to maintain an orderly pace to how we're constructing and changing things while keeping costs in mind for all. By spring of 2014, we would expect phase one to be complete. After tonight's presentation, the members of the building renovation committee will be out in the commons area by the uh, easels with the plans on it to take any further or more detailed questions that you might have. But we'll also be available to take uh, all those interested on tours of the affected area. So, that maybe when you see the area, and you get a better understanding of the things that are being talked about. So afterwards, again, more detailed questions and, and tours will be uh, will be given and made available. Um, thank you all very much for your time and attention. And with that, I Pastor Chris.
with the boiler and oil. Yeah.
churches, that St. Matthew's does more with less fanfare than any church I know. Uh, I see that things that are done certainly in support of our synod, but more than that, in support of uh, missions around the globe and locally, and it's usually done with a sense of discipleship, companionship, uh, and with little aspect things. I just want to say thanks for uh, as a grateful bishop for that kind of congregation in our midst.
we don't take lightly that this is a big project. Uh, two million, two and a half million, uh, that's not a small amount. Um, so we realize that uh, this really takes the entire congregation doing the heavy lifting, working together to really make this happen. But we really thank you for um, every amount that each person gives. It really um, does work. Working together really um, helps us to get the job done. Um, and just also note that, as, a, as I've said before, we want to take this in, um, in uh, very um, thinking methodically about how we move forward in it. We don't want to get ourselves in over our heads. Uh, we want to accomplish all of our goals, but if it means um, waiting on a piece of it until we're ready to do that um, financially, uh, we will do that. So it, it, means, um, it, it means that we're able to continue be strong in our giving um, to the greater Milwaukee area and the world um, through our benevolence. That's always been a key point of who we are. And um, it also keeps us strong um, internally with our ministry. You don't want to be um, a church, which I've seen um, right around us, uh, churches that have taken on too much and then can't do the ministry that they were already doing. And so we're being real careful with that and thinking about um, how we move forward. We're hoping as pace setters that you'll prayerfully consider and then give us a response. We're hoping before the congregation actually sees all of this, and that will be on the 28th. So we'd love for you to give us an answer in what works for your family uh, by the 26th. Um, that way we have a sense to go to the congregation with uh, kind of a number where all of you and the people that have um, already made commitments and we already have uh, a few checks, which is really nice as well. Mm -hmm. um, but to be able to say, um, our pace setters, people that have already um, prayerfully considered this, have committed X dollars, whatever that is, and that really helps to launch the campaign where the congregation says, wow, we've, we've already got momentum here, and that's wonderful. So you're really helping us to do that. So thank you for uh, being these uh, the early people that are really um, prayerfully considering ahead of time. Um, so, before you leave, make sure you grab your packet there. Um, we've got them all alphabetically sorted by the exit, and our food committee made sure to say we've got lots of desserts, <laughs> and I think some other uh, sandwiches and such. So, if you didn't get one and you came in a little bit later or whatever, please uh, get some before you leave. Grab some dessert. I know our band is also willing to stick around for a little while longer, and so don't feel like you have to rush off. But again, get your questions answered. Um, if you want to go on a tour, and yeah, make sure you get a packet before you leave. But um, a big thank you for coming out. So I want to call upon Pastor Margaret to close this thing. I would like to add my thanks to all of the thanks of um, those who have spoken before me. Just looking out at you, I know that you are people who love and care about each other and about the world. And it's this kind of love and care that so many people need. And so that's really what excites me about this campaign. If we can expand the ministry and the message of St. Matthew's further out into the world, and we need these things in the building to change to do that, that's what makes it important and lively and, and something that I really get excited about. Um, I would like to certainly thank all the people that put this together tonight, the Fund Appeal people, and um, again, the building um, people. I know you're not done <laughs> with all of that, but thank you very much for all the, the work that went into this, and, and certainly to John Paradelsky, too, for what he did, and, and Pastor Chris, for all that you put into that video, too, the original pictures. Let's close them with the Gracious God, as we come here tonight, we're just mindful of all the blessings of our lives, the ways in which you bless our families, our friends, the way in which you bless this congregation with so many good people and so many gifts and the generosity to share those gifts. And as we go out now, as we go forward, we just ask that your spirit be with us, give us time, Give us the ability to just touch into the things that we love about this community of St. Matthews. And as we realize those things, as we realize all the blessings that we have, guide us to give in ways that 